Uh, books for sale over there. They weren't published by Clefjaw, but they're with the Clefjaw books, like a sleeper agent. Nice. Yes. Uh, you know, Gabriel's story reminded me of um, domestic violence. And uh, I read somewhere that Ray Charles used to beat up the women he was with. And um, they were talking about this on the news, and all, all I could think was, was she blind too? <laughs> Um, I mean, look, that's a terrible thing, but all, all I'm saying is if she's being beat up by her blind boyfriend, she's not a domestic abuse victim, she's a good sport. Oh. Oh. Anyway, this is a poem about serial killers. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to illustrate why history is a circle. Now, imagine me saying this in my best professorial voice, despite the fact that I recently dropped out of college. You know the circle. White light on an old television, widening, open, open, and then closing. Electric kapow. You know the noise I mean. You remember. Where do we start? And with whom? The fastened seatbelt sign has come on. We are going to be experiencing some turbulence as we make our descent. Always inside some machine. Always. Tracing one's fingers along the curve is just like that little green light. Is this thing on? Fluctuations in power levels, a nuclear cardiograph golden offering. Let's start here. The Aztec Empire did not become a formal institution until 1440 when what was called the Triple Alliance between Tenochtitlan, Texcoco, and Tlacopan was sealed after a series of wars with neighboring tribes, with the latter two states siding with the Spanish against Montezuma. They built most of their major pyramids afterwards. Notice the rituals of human sacrifice preceded the architecture, yet they never bothered to discover the wheel. But they were building their god-man, glowing Iron Krishna for centuries before Cortez appeared from across the ocean, higher and higher anticipatory babble. Now, let's jump forward some, or backwards, depending on your point of view, to Austin, Texas, in the north, El Norte, in the 1880s, a serial killer the newspapers dubbed the Servant Girl Annihilator, a name coined by journalist William Sidney Porter, later best known by his pen name, O'Henry, murdered five women and one man, all servants of the upper class. Three of them were dragged, uh, dragged alive from their beds into the night, and the rest were caught and detonated in savagery. The final murder was on December 24th, 1885. Not a creature was stirring all through the house. In my opinion, Servant Girl Annihilator would make a great name for a heavy metal band. As a response to the panic, the government of Austin ordered the construction of light towers all over the city. They reflected moonlight from 165 feet above the ground. All over the city, most of them are still standing, if no longer powered by moonlight. Popular narrative would have us believe that the moonlight towers drove the Annihilator away. In reality, the towers were built a decade after the killer vanished, but we tell ourselves that the light is synchronous because it feels better to believe in it. The primary suspect was a Malaysian cook whose name was Maurice, and right around the holidays he got on a ship to England. Now here's where certain threads diverge. There are some who have pointed out that the suspect's departure coincides by a few months with the beginning of the Whitechapel killings, perpetuated by a man who identified himself to the newspapers as Jack the Ripper. And all I will say on the matter is that all of his victims were disemboweled in a way often thought as surgical, but just as easily perhaps culinary in execution. He sent a number of letters, at least one was fake, but a real one was sent to Inspector George Lust of Scotland Yard, known as the From Hell Letter, and it goes like this. <clears throat> from Hell, Mr. Lusk, sir, I send you half the kidney I took from one woman, preserved in for you to other piece I fried and ate, it was very nice. I may send you the bloody knife that took, took it out if you only wait a while, longer sign, catch him when you can, Mr. Lusk. Why, you ask, am I talking about these terrible things when I could just as easily be sitting at home watching procedural crime dramas? Well, some time ago, I met a woman by way of an ad on Craigslist. We talked for a few days and then decided to meet, so I bicycled across the city to a park near the river and waited on a bench for her. And when she got there, neither one of us was quite sure of the other's intentions, so we sat and talked, and then suddenly she laughed, and I remember she had a very large mouth, and her teeth seemed bright by the street light, and she said, For all you know, I could be Jack the Ripper luring men out here, and I responded by saying, For all you know, I could be Jack the Ripper. And we laughed. And then something moved out in the dark around us, a physicality of footsteps in the grass, but the light above us only extended a few feet and then nothing. No leaping spring heel, just me and this woman from the digital void, and it seemed like a sign, so I got on my bicycle and rode back across Albuquerque, ten miles back to my apartment. I never spoke to that person again, and I saw no other vehicles on, or people on foot that night. A popular song came playing over my headphones that went, Some people call me the space cowboy, some call me the gangster of love, some people call me Maurice. 
I kept wishing the light was bigger, the moon was more alive, bright enough to drive away that suspicion. When I was a child, I remember a boy in school explaining to me that he believed that Jesus was still out there wandering the earth, which contradicted the idea of Jesus rising from the grave and then leaving again, but I'll always remember the way that boy in a Chicago Cubs t-shirt said, he's still out there. Somewhere on a television, Peter Lorre has the letter M in chalk on his back and is on the run. Within a few months of my meeting this woman in the park, someone dubbed the Craigslist Killer, operating out of my own hometown, became our newest monster, luring people off the internet and butchering them. Most of them were men, which is odd for a serial killer, which le led to some speculation that it was a woman doing it. Funny how these things work out. I wanted to tell them to build moon towers, but, like I said, those only scared him away in hindsight. What if the Aztecs built their pyramids, made their sacrifices against the shining serpentine penitentes freshly grown in the ruins of Al Andalus, each open chest cavity heart seeking a wildflower to the eclipse, sending out a smoke signal? Single male seeks companion, looking for a sincere woman to meet for coffee and go from there. Skip all the endless emails, texts, and phone calls. Time is short. Time is wasting.